What's up, folks? Eternal Angle here. So, you know, sorry I haven't got out fishing lately. Um, kind of took a break. Um, then when I did get out fishing, I just basically tried musky fishing. And basically, last week I hit up the spillway for a little bit. Then I didn't get anything. Then I headed over to Clinton River. And I actually had a pretty nice follow-up of 35, 40 inch. He actually tapped my Street King 8.0. Um, I was fishing the shallows with this, uh, but I ended up getting weeds on it, and then the musky hit it, and it just <laughs> wasn't in a good combination. Um, but it was just very, you know, one of those times where you know you got weeds on it, and you're reeling it up, and he's following it up, following it up, and, you know, I kind of tried to set the hook when he kind of took a strike at it, but it just wasn't good enough where, you know, I could let those hooks dig in. So today, or this year has been really weird, man. The weather isn't very consistent, doesn't stabilize. Um, just like a couple of days ago, <laughs> it was like 40 degrees at night. Um, it's just crazy, man. It's been a crazy year. Um, bass fishing, I heard, hasn't been as good as a lot of people want it to be. Um, and musky fishing so far this year that I've gone out, it just it hasn't been really that great. But I think I'm going to keep with it though. Um, I, you know, you got to, you got to change up lures every year. It changes what the muskies are going for. I mean, one year I remember I was getting musky and pike all on my two baits bass fishing. And I thought, what if I could just supersize this version of tube and go with a seven inch tube? And so I ended up buying like a few soft plastic from, I think it's called Canyon plastics and they make like a giant size, size two bay from seven inch to eight inch to uh 10 inch and so i started jigging that seven inch i ended up hooking into a nice size musky it was around 40 inches that year i mean it was it was just one of those years where i guess the musky were really feeding on the bottom they might be going for gobies they might be going for crayfish but it just it changes each year and you know Everyone uses a bulldog out on Lake St. Clair, and I have to say, it's one of the most effective baits you can throw for musky. And there's, I would say, there's no other lure that's going to get you a 50 inch musky. I mean, people, you know, throwing the pounders, it is, I've heard locals getting up to 20 musky in one day on the bulldog. And I mean, even though it's one of the most effective baits, um, definitely being in a large size it is catching those giant size 50 inch musk you can still try do what i'm doing try some of these smaller uh fishing layers and try throwing those at the musky and you know over the years when i was using uh the striking 2.5 you know i was doing pretty effect doing pretty well catching smallmouth bass largemouth bass but the one thing i noticed is the musky were honing in on this, and from time to time, I'd hook into like a 35 inch musky on the 2.5. And so that influenced me and told me something to maybe even try out their biggest version of the square bill, such as the 8.0. And what do you know? It turned out to be one of the most effective musculars in my tackle box. I mean, this is basically made uh, for catching big bass in the shallows during tournaments and all that, but you know, ended up working for working out for me for catching big esox. This is pike and musky. And so what I'm getting at here is um Northern Mike's friend Sean, he uses the seven centimeters flicker shag. And this is basically one of the most economical crankbaits you can use for smallmouth bass fishing, folks. I mean it it crushes the smallmouth bass. It does very well um it just it's one of those lures from time to time when i'm not doing too well smallmouth fishing i'll break out the flicker shed and the smallmouth go ape shit over it but there's another species <laughs> that really tends to like this flicker shed and that's musky um getting back to what i was about to say is a uh, northern mike's friend sean has hooked into some really nice size musky on the flicker shed now Getting to what they might be attracted to, um, when it comes to the Strike King 8.0 or any of the other square bills in the Strike King line, it's pretty obvious to me what the muskie are honing in on. It's the wide, hard-hitting vibration that the square bill produces. Um, it's a very hard-hitting, wide wobble. Um, I've caught muskie 
and just complete mud water and when no other lure would work in those conditions the 8.0 square bill ended up working pretty well um and i i remember i snagged like it was just i didn't think i was going to get anything that day i think alex was fishing with me it was like december in the fall and the water is completely stained and ended up the muskie ended up whacking it with its tail so i kind of snagged them but it told me that they're honing in on the wide hard hitting vibration now what what do you guys think that the uh, muskie might be attracted to in the flicker shed now this lure is completely different than the square bill um it gives off a really tight hard hitting vibration as it vibrates through the water it's very tight the wobble is um but i think it also speed might be the key too the the narrow lip on this crankbait it travels through the water very quickly very quickly and it gives off that really hard hitting tight vibration i mean it's not very hard hitting but it's a tight vibration and i think that the combination of the speed the tight vibration and uh, some of the killer colors that Berkeley makes in the flicker shed that the muskie are very attracted to. And so that's the seven centimeters. Um, show you guys, this is the nine centimeters. Um, it's kind of hard to find these. Um, not every fishing shop has them. But what I'm getting at is I might, tr since it's been kind of having a tough time catching muskie this year. I might try throwing this nine centimeters. And a shout out to Berkeley. They might actually think about supersizing this even bigger, like 11 centimeters or a 12 centimeters um, flicker shed and see if that might work for musky. Uh, but I, I suspect if they do that, it might go like 20 feet deep. Um, I think the nine centimeters is rated at like, I don't know, 14 to seven feet deep, 17 feet deep. So. I mean, the bigger you go, you could they could always shorten the lip too because I think they have a shallow diving flicker shed. So this is just an idea for Berkeley. So shout out to them. Think about making a giant size Berkeley flicker shed. But next time out, I might think about throwing uh, this flicker shed. Now these hooks <laughs> are definitely not the hooks you want to be using for muskie. So I might put on uh, different size hooks. Now. <clears throat> this isn't as uncommon as you think it is because there's a lot of other lure companies that supersize their versions too. Um, you guys know that I'm a big fan of the SXR10 or XR10 um, X-Wrap jerkbait in the glass ghost color. Um, I do really well with it for smallmouth over at Lake St. Clair. Do very well with it um, over at La uh, Kent Lake for largemouth and even pike. Um, and believe it or not, just smoked the snook down in uh, Florida, uh, down in Naples and Marco Island with this color and this X wrap. And Rapala, believe it or not, they've supersized the version up to um, basically the this is the SXR12 here, and they have even a bigger version. And this is what I ended up catching. Um, that stingray on is it, this is the SXR14, so that thing's basically giant, giant, isn't it? Pretty cool. Um, so there's a lot of companies that do this. Um, I think Berkeley, since they have such a big success with the flicker shed, I think they should do it too. Another one you might not know is uh, the Bill Lewis Rattle Trap. Um, they made a super sized version. Of this as well uh, lipless crankbait and here's a perch color now I've casted these from muskie from time to time I had not really got anything on it yet but again I got so many different fishing lures for muskie that you know from time to time I'm not always throwing this stuff sometimes you just got to find the right conditions for each of these lures to work on muskie but Anyways, I'm going to save this lure for later, and I think one day I'll find out what those lipless, how those lipless will work very effective for muskie, so I'm not giving up. Another one, another bass lure uh, that you might not know, uh, they made a supersized version for both saltwater and muskie and pike fishing, is the Arbogast Mudbug. Um, it's kind of rare to come by it. 
Um, I check on eBay from time to time, hoping that I might find the saltwater version of the mud bug. Like it's basically super size. Um, they've based again, they, they used that for musky and pike back in the day, but they also used it for saltwater. So, and <clears throat> the one thing the mud bug has in common with the Strike King 8.0 is that really wide uh, square bill lip. Um, now, however, I think the mud bug still got, gives off a unique vibration like no other crankbait I've used before. Um, this metal lip, the way it's curved up top here, um, it's very unique. I just, I'll never understand why some of these fishing lure companies discontinue these very effective lures. I'll not, I mean, I can't believe they discontinued the mud bug. It's one of the most effective crankbaits um, that I've heard over the years. And you can still get them on eBay for a decent price. <coughs> so anyways, getting past that. Um, so basically, shout out to Berkeley. Um, think about, I hope you guys think about making a giant size flicker shed. Um, I think it would work very effective. Um, very effectively on musky um but i just you know i don't know if they'll end up doing it you know some of these companies like i said i've emailed strike king um and showed them a videos how well the 8.0 works for musky fishing and you know i worry that basically they're going to discontinue this lure because it might not be flying off the shelves for bass fishing it just you got to have a really beefy rod and reel to cast this. And I just know a lot of bass fishermen aren't going to be doing that. So that's why I emailed them. But I'll probably shoot Berkeley uh, email with this video giving them an idea. Um, but maybe, you know, I'll have to first catch a nice size muskie with the 9 centimeters to prove to them that this flicker shag could be very effective for muskie fishing. But um, last time I heard from Strike King... Um, they said that they were gonna thinking they were thinking about per, you know making their own line of baits for musky fishing, especially considering doing it with the 8.0, maybe doing like a through wire construction, bigger, thicker, stronger hooks. Um, but I just you know I haven't heard back from them since then, so um, we'll see what's up. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, I'll get out shortly and get some. Nice uh, musky footage for you guys to watch. And, you know, it just... <laughs> it's just how it goes, man. Every year is different. I remember back... I don't know. Uh, I can't remember what year. It was a 2016 or 2017. The musky were just everywhere on Lake St. Clair. I mean, just... They were everywhere, man. You you take a cast anywhere. Even back to the canals, you'd get a musky on, like... I mean, on a panfish bait, a uh, bass bait, whatever. And it just, each year it fluctuates. Um, some years, the, it really goes by the, you know, the the traditional uh, uh, slogan, you know, every 10,000 casts you can catch a muskie. And sometimes that's how it goes, you know. So, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. Tight Lines Anglers, and take care.